you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, Burger King. Burger King actually just released an ad explaining their new campaign for going green. When cows fart and burp and splatter, well, it ain't no laughing matter. They're releasing methane every time they do. And that methane from the rear goes up to the atmosphere and pollutes our planet, warming me and you. Yes, that methane that the past is a greenhouse gas that'll trap the sun's heat and change our climate too. <laughs> and when I there in a question that it's helping cow suggestion, adding plant and grass so they can play their part. Whee! Scientists have proven that it works. <laughs> Reducing methane, methane. We can reduce emissions by more than a third. Got the guy singing for a little bird. <laughs> Beyond the just ridiculous level of cringiness of that entire feel that you just heard. <laughs> I, I love the end of that. That's probably my favorite part is like, since we're part of the problem, we're going to be part of the solution. It's like such a self-hating little dig at themselves, which is very, very odd. Uh, you know, I'm not in advertising, but that breaks pretty much every known law of advertising. First of all, you punch yourself in the face just at the end there saying, well, we're part of the problem. And then the other part of the ad, again, I'm not like a marketing genius, but I think I'm smart enough to know that when you're a company that sells food, you should probably steer away from your ads featuring people climbing out of cattle rectums uh, at, like a doorway and mentioning, just quoting them, cow farts and splattering, which I guess is a reference to cow diarrhea. Like, if you're trying to sell food, stay away from that stuff in your ads. That might be a winning strategy for when you're trying to sell people something to eat. <laughs> so ju just on the surface level, before you get to any of the stuff that they're saying being, sci being scientifically wrong or being, you know, just obvious political pandering, remove all of the politics, remove all of the partisanship. The ad itself is incredibly mind-numbingly dumb for a food company, a restaurant chain to be putting out just on that level by itself. But... The thing that's so crazy about it, your name is Burger King. If you're so convinced that cattle, you know, flatulating, that that is somehow causing the planet to burn up and, and we're going to destroy the planet if we continue to eat beef, then show me the courage of your convictions and shut down. It's the same thing that I do when people try to give me this insane Malthusian and economics lecture that has been proven for about, has been completely disproven for about 200 years now. Uh, that we just have too many people and there's overpopulation and we can't increase the population. I was like, well, then why are you still alive? Now, granted, I'm not encouraging anyone to kill themselves, just like I'm not encouraging Burger King to shut its doors. I'm just saying that you merely existing is proof that you don't really believe in the lie that you're trying to peddle. Because the population people, if they were, you know, real about that, if they really believed that there were too many people in the world, then they would start with themselves and kill themselves. In the same way that Burger King, if they really believed that beef was this incredibly harmful thing that is destroying the planet, the first thing that they would do is close their doors and not serve any more beef. You don't believe your own psychosis. It's the same reason that you've got people like Al Gore 
that crow about carbon emissions despite using a private jet to fly everywhere. It's the same reason that you have people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that less than two days after telling people that they need to just stop eating beef is having a dinner with her uh, campaign, or was it her campaign strategy guy or her chief of staff? Either way, and he's having a giant burger the size of my head. Like, these people don't really believe this stuff. And Burger King doesn't believe this either. They don't believe a word of this. If they did, the very first thing they would do is shut down every chain that they own. And Burger King's a pretty woke uh, company anyway. Like, they're right up there with Starbucks and Target and uh, Chipotle and all of them. And, and they constantly do this ridiculous virtue signaling thing, despite the fact that they have an obvious lack of conviction or belief in it themselves. The thing that is odd about that, though, is who are you appealing to? Because it kind of makes sense for Chipotle and uh, Starbucks to do this kind of stuff because that's their audience. Those guys are playing to the uh, imbecilic hipster crowd, like the, the people that think that they're smarter than everyone else despite not knowing anything. Uh, the, the people that are you know, 31 and living in their mom's basement. Those people, yes. Those are people that Starbucks should be pandering to. I'm not saying everyone that drinks Starbucks is that. I'm just saying that that is a significant portion of their customer base. And so doing all these crazy leftist virtue signals, it kind of makes sense if you're Starbucks. That's your core audience. Same thing is true of Chipotle. Same thing is true of, well, to a lesser extent, but there's still a, a good amount of people that, that fall into the target demographic of target. So, yeah, wordplay intended there. That's the target demographic right there. At least some people in that sort of uh, far left leaning woke culture, they tend to favor target over places like Walmart or whatever. And so that is part of their core base. Do you think any of those people would ever be caught dead in a Burger King? Like, seriously, the, the guy that's listening to indie rock and uh, has the scarf on when it's 80 degrees outside and the, the thick rimmed glasses and the, uh, the, I don't know, the paper boy hat or whatever, do you think that guy's eating at Burger King? No. The people generally, and granted, I don't go to Burger King real often, but the people that you generally see in a Burger King, they couldn't give a flying crap about any of this. Which is funny because the whole ad is about flying crap. But anyway, nonetheless, they, they don't care. And so it just astounds me that Burger King has figured out a way to tick off everybody. Is it appealing to country music fans? No, generally your country music fans don't care about this kind of junk anyway. And the people that would care about this stuff probably aren't country music fans. And so they're not going to get the draw of this weird pseudo country music thing. I mean, yeah, there. You know, maybe your uh, Tim McGraws or your your super progressive far left people actually in country music might like it, but the people that listen to country music, not so much. And so I, I really am kind of baffled just from a marketing standpoint of who do they even think that they're appealing to with this kind of stuff. But here's the thing: not only does the ad make no sense from a marketing standpoint. It's not even based on anything that's real. The science itself is wrong. Because if you look here, this was a joint study that was done by the United States Department of Agriculture and Virginia Tech. They put together several models, and, and this particular model was basically, they, they took the scenario and did the stats and did all the math and said, all right, what would the world look like? Could we actually reduce carbon emissions if we just got rid of literally every livestock animal, every poultry animal, chickens, cows, hogs, all of it? If we just got rid of that entirely, since this has become a, a popular leftist talking point, that we need to reduce meat and that's going to help save the environment. This was their findings when it came to what would happen if we actually did all of that. U.S. agriculture was modeled to determine the impacts of removing farmed animals on food supply adequacy and greenhouse gases emissions. The modeled system without animals increased total food production 23%, altered food available for domestic consumption, and decreased agricultural U.S. GHG 28%. 
but only reduce the total USGHG by 2.6 percentage units compared with a system with animals, diets formulated for the U.S. population in the plants-only system had a greater excess of dietary energy and resulted in greater numbers of deficiencies in essential nutrients. The results give insights into why decisions on modifications to agricultural systems must be made based on description of direct and indirect effects of change on dietary rather than individual nutrient basis. So that was a whole lot of jargon, but essentially what they're saying there is if we were to get rid of literally every animal in America, every single domestically raised animal for the purpose of consumption, just got rid of all of them, it would only decrease the carbon emissions by 2.6% for the entire country. By the way, if you're factoring that up for what it would look like on the global scale, that's only 0.36% of carbon emissions cut by that. And they're saying, and you also can't neglect the fact that there would be sufficient and severe dietary problems that would be caused by that if everybody was only eating vegetables and other plant-based uh, substances. So if that were to take place, serious dietary ramifications, and even if we got rid of all of them, every single one, cut out meat entirely, it's only going to be 0.3% of all carbon emissions in the world. <laughs> you talk about straining at a gnat to swallow a camel. I mean, man, that is a ridiculous level of consequences for virtually no change whatsoever in whether or not it actually makes a difference. But here's the thing that's even crazier about all of that. Even that tiny little 0.36% of all all global emissions that would be cut out, and that's if we got rid of literally every single farm animal in America, it still wouldn't even have an impact that measures up to that because the greenhouse gases that are emitted by them, those aren't the bad greenhouse gases anyway that stick around and cause any kind of global warming. And keep in mind, I don't necessarily buy into a lot of the global warming stuff. I'm very skeptical on whether or not it's actually going to be this apocalyptic level of problems that people are claiming, but I'm about to cite somebody who does believe in that level of it and, and is absolutely one of the people that is, is pushing this narrative that we have to drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions in order to save the planet. I don't believe that, but this person does. Uh, her name is Dr. Michelle Kane at Oxford, and she said that the GTCH4, which is the methane that is produced by cattle and other ruminants when digesting, and, and uh, this is both uh, emissions by belching, by flatulence, everything. This is their total methane put out. The methane that cattle emit has a half-life of about a decade, so its warming effect deteriorates very quickly compared to other greenhouse gases. In fact, she found that the half-life for that methane is so low that even if you had a constant supply of methane, in other words, even if you have a herd of cattle that you, every single year, you continue, you have a steady increase in methane, even if you increase the size of your, your flock and increase the level of methane, no matter how much methane you add to the atmosphere, the half-life would cause it to basically balance itself out so you cannot increase global temperature no matter how much of this particular kind of methane you pump into the atmosphere. Now, there is a different, uh, a different type of methane that is produced by burning fossil fuels that she says is far more problematic. And again, this is a person that actually does believe in the apocalyptic version of climate change. But she's saying when it comes to cattle and livestock, nope, not a concern. That methane does not in any way contribute to a rise in global temperature. She said no matter how much you pump into the atmosphere, the half-life is so low that it is impossible for people to, with the kind of methane that is produced by cattle, actually increase global temperature. It just deteriorates far too quickly for that to, to be a problem. And so Burger King is doing this based off of absolutely nothing. The thing is, because of how ridiculous it is, because of how demeaning it is towards farmers, I don't, I don't know about you, but if I'm a farmer, I do not want any of my beef to go to Burger King after seeing something like this and then basically blaming me for a global catastrophe, me just trying to put food on America's tables. At that point, I'm just done. I'm out. I don't want anything to do with that company anymore. 
But the truth is, me being a non-farmer and not really being a Burger King customer, there's not a whole lot I can do to boycott them. Like, this would be something that would be enough of a turnoff for me that I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I don't really want to deal with these people anymore. But the thing is, Burger King already did that to me a long time ago. Their food is so terrible, their service is so terrible, that I have no desire to eat at a Burger King, even if they were uber conservative and supported gun rights and, and b basically became what Chick-fil-A was two or three years ago. Now, Burger King's not that. I mean, this is the company that brought you the Rainbow Walker, uh, the Rainbow Whopper for Pride Month. So I already didn't really like them that much. But the thing is, even before all of that, even before they went political and, and tried to go super woke, I wasn't going to eat there because their food sucks. I mean, the fries are, they got the, like the worst fries in fast food. Their, their fries are just awful. Uh, the meat patties are so thin you can barely taste it. When you bite into a Whopper, basically all you're tasting is bread. And the bread don't taste all that good. So you're not really getting a whole lot out of it. I just don't get it. Like, it, there's other people that like Burger King. I don't think you're a horrible person if you eat there. After this, I wouldn't want to eat there even if I did like their food. But to be perfectly honest, I just, I don't get the draw. I, I would boycott Burger King, but boycotting Burger King would look exactly the same as what I do now, which is just not eat at Burger King. <laughs> Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.